Well, good evening. Good evening. To all those gathered here in person and to those watching at home, I'd like to welcome you to Church of the Resurrection for this Ash Wednesday. My name is Stephen Blackmore. For those I haven't met yet, and it's great to see some here in person that I haven't seen in this space since uh, I've been here, so it's wonderful uh, to be able to have the opportunity to gather again. It's no secret that we are living in troubling times, but we are gathered here today to do what the people of God have always done in troubling times. We gather together to pray, we gather to worship, we gather to lift up the names or the people in our world in special need of God's grace and protection, and we'll be doing that in our service as well as we light a special candle for the people of Ukraine and offer prayer on their behalf as well. Everything you'll need for the service will be projected on the screen. We also have service uh, bulletins. Reverend Leon and myself will lead you through the entirety of today's service. But before our worship does begin, we'd like to acknowledge, as the Church of the Resurrection, the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and directly adjacent to Haldeman Treaty territory. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. May we take a moment to quiet our hearts and prepare ourselves for worship this day. Our opening hymn as we lay our broken world. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing, and make us whole in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's holy word.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help. And he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Holy word, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. pray. Loving God, may your word be spoken, may your word be heard, and may your word be lived. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our Lenten journey begins today. And this particular leg of the journey is not all that pleasant in a way. I heard one person liken it to a restless night that is empty, lonely, and downright uncomfortable. About a year ago, I underwent one of those overnight sleep trials to test the quality of my sleep. And if you've ever under, undergone one, you know it is its own unique form of torture. <laughs> you share the evening with a company of strangers in a bed that's not your own. You have all these electrodes poking and prodding every impulse from your brain, and they're stuck to your head with all this goop that fills your hair. And you have this ominous camera in the corner of the room where you know someone's sitting in front of a monitor watching you all night long. <laughs> you feel exposed, uncomfortable, and for much of the night you just want, for much of the night you're feeling like you just want it to be over so that you can go home. Lent can be like that in a way. Ash Wednesday in particular can be a lot like that. We know this journey will end with a stunningly beautiful resurrection morning, but before we get there, we have to traverse the desert. Before we can get to the resurrection, we first must be prodded and poked and examined. In the desert of Lent, we become acutely aware of our sin, sin that led to Christ's shame, torture, and crucifixion. We know the Lenten journey towards Easter exposes woundedness and mourning and betrayal. Resurrection begins with understanding that dust and disaster and deceit are where we've landed. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In a few moments, those, these words will be on my lips and Reverend Leon's as we spread ashes on foreheads into the shape of a cross. Ash Wednesday is one of the most poignant of commemorations in the Christian church, yet it is not often very well attended. And I think some people avoid Ash Wednesday because of its unpalatable themes of human weakness and mortality. The ashen mark of the cross serves its purpose of reminding us that one day we will return to the dust of the earth and that Christ's love manifest in the cross will sustain us through this life 
and into the next. What a lot of folks don't know is that it is the custom for many churches that the ashes are mixed with oil, the same kind of oil used at one's baptism. After receiving baptism, one is marked with oil on the sign of the cross on one's forehead as these words are used. I sign you with the cross and mark you as Christ's own forever. The oil represents the seal of the Holy Spirit and the assurance of God's continued presence in one's life. And when one is sick, or perhaps even at the point of death, the mark of the cross is made again on the forehead with use of anointing oil. And these words may be prayed. May the Lord in his love and mercy uphold you by the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. And making the sign of the cross upon our foreheads today, we once again are renewed in our baptisms and claim the wholeness we have in Christ Jesus. But I'd like to suggest we also receive the ash and mark of the cross today as a gesture of solidarity with those most acutely aware of their mortality. These include the homeless and marginalized in our society, the mentally ill and those in complex care. It includes the hungry and destitute and those struggling to keep it all together. It includes the approximately 60 million people displaced around the world by poverty, disease, and violence. And it certainly includes the people of the Ukraine. Those living in makeshift shelters, those facing their own mortality as gunfire rages and bombings decimate. Throughout Lent, we will be saying special prayers for the people of the Ukraine, and I would encourage you to find practical ways to make a difference in supporting relief efforts. The Red Cross and our own PWRDF organization are good places to start. But today, Jesus reminds us in our gospel that our outward acts of piety are meaningless, if not accompanied by inward belief and conviction. The prophets so often write of God desiring a fast of justice where the oppressed are set free and the poor are fed. And so the disciplines of almsgiving, prayer, and fasting are ways in which we may incarnate our spirituality and make a difference in the lives of others. As we receive the mark of the cross today, may we be reminded of our own mortality, but also of our solidarity with our brothers and sisters around the world and in our lives who are living day to day. Let us hear their stories, be moved to extend compassion, and know that death and violence do not have the final say. They are not the end of this journey. So let us bravely join Jesus in the desert and in him see that vulnerability is the path to victory and God's love will pull us through the gates of death to life everlasting. Amen. A prayer for Ukraine on this Ash Wednesday. All powerful God, in our powerlessness, we switch off the lights and sit in solidarity with our siblings in Ukraine and Russia. We pray protection for our friends, love for our enemies, and peace, that peace which passes all understanding, to abide in hearts and minds, that a passionate prophetic peace would permeate political stalemates, halt this invasion, and disarm the threat of nuclear war. In this day of dust and ashes, we bring all our fears and hopes into the thickening darkness, knowing that there, always there, you are found. Amen. Amen.
let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart, and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death, and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, Good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. Let us pray. God, our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In just a moment, we'll receive that uh, mark of ashes. How we will uh, do so will be similar to how we receive uh, communion. And so we'll begin with the uh, choir on this side. And if you can line up down the center aisle, please be mindful of keeping uh, six feet apart as much as you are able. Both Reverend Leon and myself will be uh, here at the front. I'll be sort of here, and Reverend Leon will be further to my right. And uh, when one of us is free, 
when you're, when you're at the front of the line, if you come to one of us, we will um, give you the mark of the cross. And uh, similarly, that's how we will uh, receive communion as well. And we'll have Glenna and Steve kind of help direct traffic as well for that. Right. Thank you. grace and nourish you with God's blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to God's grace. Let us stand together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. In a contactless manner, let us share in a sign of God's peace God's with one peace. another. Peace, my friend. Peace. God's peace.
Let us pray. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people join in praise and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. The Lord is here. God's, God's Spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured. May be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taken bread. He praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence and sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. <clears throat> Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, our loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as I say, the Christ taught us, let us pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we 
forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. See what you become and become what you see. The gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inest inestimable gifts and also daily endeavor 
to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, our Lord, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward to our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sin in his body on the tree, heal you by his womb. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <coughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank, Thank you, God. God.